Guys, how's it going? It's Coach Sean from A1 Fitness. Hope you're have, all having a great day and welcome to this video. So what I wanted to speak about in this training is the concept of as food processing increases, our nutrient density in, in the food that we're having decreases. All right, and obviously we wanna make sure we're keeping that as high as possible. So minimally processed whole foods, such as grains, nuts, eggs, and fish, all right, they contain like really important stuff, okay? So a massive selection of vitamins, minerals, plant nutrients and zoo nutrients, all really, really important for us to get in on a daily basis into our bodies. And although right now, you know, there's still a lot of gray areas and things still not figured out when it comes to nutrition, there is a wealth of research consistently points to one resounding conclusion. And that is that humans are healthier when they consume more whole foods and fewer refined or processed ones, okay? So this is probably because the greater the degree of processing, the higher the likelihood that a food has won, and lost its nutritional value, such as fiber, essential fatty acids, vitamins, minerals, phytonutrients, and zoonutrients, and two, has gained additives, preservatives, fillers, sugar, sodium, all that bad stuff, unhealthy fats, and or refined starch, okay? So this is a lot easier to see when you actually compare specific whole foods to their more highly processed equivalents, which is what I'm now going to do below. So as you can see in the infograph, and um, which I'm just about to show you, the less processed steak and potato dinner contains about 350 fewer calories and literally a fraction of the sodium as the fast food burger with fries, as well as a hell of a lot more protein, fiber and other nutrients. So you can see it here. So on the left, we got the fast. Um, if you might not be able to see this, I'll make sure that it's in a document um, somewhere with this video. Um, you got your fast food burger, which has 918 calories, highly processed, you know, milligrams of, and then 1,012 milligrams of sodium versus our six ounce tenderloin with baked potato and two cups of steamed broccoli, which has only 562 and 108 you know, uh, milligrams of sodium, massive, massive difference there. And that's just one comparison, guys, again. So if you're watching this and you didn't see the infograph, I'll make sure that I stick it somewhere in the video so that you can see it. Um, and that's just one comparison, but you can literally analyze any whole food along with its more refined counterpart, and you'll still see similar differences in calories, sodium, and nutrients. Okay. So it makes sense that a diet rich in minimally processed foods can lead to lower rates of heart disease, lower rates of cancer, decreased depression, and type 2 diabetes, among many other health problems. And minimally processed whole foods are also rich in fiber and um, protein as well, two nutrients that are really, really important in keeping us fuller for longer and that actually bolster us, our society is the word. So basically keeping us fuller for longer um, and just, yeah, just making us feel full. And they unsatisfied, of course, as well. And they tend to have fewer calories all right, the minimally processed whole foods, fewer calories per serving than highly processed refined foods, which obviously is really important when it comes to uh, weight loss and the whole calories in versus calories out, which you can find in another video that I'll speak about as well. So both of these traits, guys, make it easier for us to control our weight, which is obviously great. And in one randomized controlled trial, even found that people ate a stunning 500 more calories per day when they consumed a diet rich in ultra processed foods compared to a diet rich in minimally processed whole foods. And that's like essentially the equivalent of one more meal in their day, right? That's insane. Okay. So minimally processed whole foods may be what all the successful diets actually share in common. Because think about it, right? We got all these other fad diets out there and um, where they focus on, you know, protein, and, you know, they focus on low carbs, like all these stuff, right? But the problem is that they're very restrictive. And what if the difference is that you can have a mixture of all three, but, you know, all three being basically your protein, your carbs, your fats, and then obviously I count in vegetables as well. All right. So your, your main four and you have a more minimally processed whole food version of everything rather than cutting out all of the you know, bad stuff, such as your bread, potatoes, like they're still fine to have in small amounts. All right. But if you're having more minimally processed whole foods rather than the processed versions of them, you'll see much more better results. And this is exactly the way I teach things, exactly the way I've gotten the results in my own weight loss journey and exactly the way that I teach my clients inside all of my programs as well. 
Now, this obviously comes from study and science as well, okay? So it has shown that participants experienced the same amount of weight loss, okay, regardless of carb or fat intake, as long as they minimized their consumption of refined sugars, flours, and other processed foods, while emphasizing whole foods like vegetables, all right? And they also experienced similar improvements in blood pressure, insulin, glucose, and cholesterol levels, all right? So that sounds great. So you're just like, okay, cool. I just want to know what that means for me. All right. So this is what it means for you. I am 100% confident about the importance of whole foods, but I'm also extremely confident about something else. Progress is much more important than perfection, guys. All right. So many of us try to, you know, have everything perfect, the perfect time to exercise, the perfect time to follow a fitness journey, the perfect nutrition plan, the perfect um, exercise program and there's no such thing as perfect guys Do you know what I mean it's all about progress okay so rather than separating foods and getting our foods perfect I want um, and separating them into whole and not whole categories you want to imagine a, imagine a spectrum of everything okay so again I'm just going to go through a, um, a graphic here but I'm also describe it for everyone watching the video as well and doesn't see it um, in the graphic, we'll basically have on the left side, we have our whole foods, and then on the right side, we have our highly processed. And so some examples of whole foods, and um, then we obviously have our, you know, more going away from the whole foods and into the highly processed in the middle. And um, so I'll explain them as well. So example of a grain, you got your whole foods is your brown rice, your, you sort of I like to think about it by a traffic light system. So green, yellow and red. So your yellow is your white rice, and then your red are your highly processed is your rice puff cereals. So like your rice krispies, your sugar puffs, all that type of stuff. So that's your grains. Okay, so vegetables, you got your sweet potato, which is your whole, you got your sweet potato fries, which is in the middle, and then you got your sweet potato pie, which is your highly processed. Then you have your fruit, you have your apple, then your applesauce, then your applesauce muffins. All right, again, see moving from whole foods all the way down to highly processed. You got your beans and legumes, so your black beans, your canned black beans, and then your black beans, you know, in with tortilla chips. All right, then you have your meat and poultry. You got your whole chicken versus your rotisserie chicken. And then you obviously got your chicken nuggets for your highly processed. And then to finish off, then you got your fish and seafood. You got your fresh whole shrimp, for example, will be the whole foods. So again, trying to have that as much as that as possible. You got your canned shrimp in the middle and you got your popcorn shrimp, you know, with your tempura prawns and all that sort of stuff on your highly processed side. And then with the nuts and seeds, you're moving from shelled peanuts to peanut butter and to peanut butter cookies. So again, when we think about this as a spectrum, guys, the question that you should be asking yourself is where you are at right now. All right, so if you find that you are having a lot of whole foods already, amazing. Keep going with that. Stay consistent with it. Make sure you're getting more water. Make sure you're moving daily. And you, you, by following those three things, you'll be getting a lot, lot better results and um, more consistent results as well in your health and fitness journey. OK, so if you say if you are saying to yourself that you're eating a lot of whole foods, but you're still not seeing results, you know, First of all, figure out where you're maybe not having a lot of whole foods. And then secondly, make sure you're drinking enough water and you're exercising and moving daily as well. And that will get you much better results. If you do find out that you're having more highly processed foods, write them down and then look at their whole food version or even their less processed version. So as I say, if you find you're having like um, a lot of sort of, you know, simple carbs like your your muffins, your pastries, you know, your processed foods, like your fast food, all that type of stuff, guys. We need to be moving away from that more towards our lesser processed and our whole foods. So again, more towards our applesauce, our apples. All right. Because all you're after when you have the applesauce muffins is just the sugar. All right. So you get the same, you get the same sweetened, um, you know, sweetener from an apple, but in much more healthier version. Okay, not in, and then it doesn't have all this extra added sugar on top of it. Um, and then again, so yeah, write those down and just make those small little changes. Again, one thing at a time, guys, we're aiming for progress here, not perfection. And so again, to finish off, the goal with Whole Foods isn't to get things perfect. It's just to instead focus on making them a little bit better. All right, so just ask yourself where you're at now, what goals you want to achieve and what you got to do to get there. 
All right. So it's much better to have um, or so a rotisserie chicken from the supermarket may not be as pastured or lovely hand raised, um, but it sure as hell beats chicken nuggets. All right. And that's the main thing to think about there. We want less processed, more highly, um, you know, high in whole foods. And again, 80% of our week is, an, is a good sort of way to think about it and a way that I teach as well. So 80% of the week, guys, you want to be having more whole foods. If you still want, you, you know, we can still obviously enjoy our lives and make sure just the other 20% of the time, we can still have some processed foods. We can still have our chips and ice cream and all that sort of stuff at the weekends. But again, 80-20 rule, guys, really, really important. So that's it for today's video. All right, where I've just broken down um, a lot of different things there about, you know, the benefits of whole foods um, on just not our physical health, but also our mental health as well. And why you should follow a whole foods diet rather than a keto or IF or all those other fad diets out there to get really, really like actual amazing and long-term results in your health and fitness journey. So of course, guys, if you need any help implementing any of these strategies that I've talked about in the video, reach out to me, send me a DM, leave a comment wherever you're seeing this um, or check out any of the other videos that I have um, throughout my YouTube channel and my other social media channels as well. So I hope to speak to you all very soon. and I'll see you in the next video. Take it easy.